Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to do a character analysis on Anemone. This is going to be probably my hardest video to make as Anemone is such a difficult character to analyze. However, this will be quite an interesting one because Anemone is such a complex character. This video contains spoilers for Talons of Power, so please keep that in mind. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Anemone's issues stem from three main factors. Hover protective and toxic mother, being spoiled her whole childhood, and her animus magic. I'll be covering each of these in segments so we'll be able to analyze each bit as to why Anemone is the way she is. Though she isn't as rebellious and aggressive as she was for Arc 2, these problems still need to be addressed. I don't think Anemone will ever truly shake off the feelings she felt in the past, but she is on the route to improvement. So, out of the three issues I mentioned, the first one I'll talk about is her overprotective and toxic mother. I did a very important analysis on Queen Coral in the past, so please check out that video if you haven't. Coral was toxic to Anemone without even realizing it, mainly due to her overprotectiveness. Coral thought that she only had one daughter, which meant one heir to the throne, which is why she kept Anemone with her constantly. However, this is extremely damaging for the seeming dragonette. She grew up harnessed to her mother, barely able to leave her side. Coral was so worried about losing her only dragonette that she didn't take the time to notice or even care about how it was affecting her daughter. Anemone often tried to cope with her mother's overprotectiveness by being rebellious, often making situations worse. Anemone grew to have an insatiable desire to be independent, likely contributing to her descent into near madness when she realized the true extent of her animus magic. All it did was boost the desire of rebellion and independence even further, giving Anemone the feeling that she didn't need anybody else. That often happens in the real world, and typically poor parenting is to blame. Even without Coral's overprotective manner, there's still her toxicity to consider. If you've watched my previous Queen Coral analysis video, I mention a lot of the awful and borderline abusive things she did to Anemone and many others. After doing some digging, I found even more. Anemone was never one to complain, but the few times she did, in regards to her harness, her own mother threatened to get her a gag to go with it. Queen Coral has killed in front of Anemone before, likely making the seeming princess more desensitized to violence. If you wanted even more of Coral's awful parenting, just take a look at how isolated she made her own daughter due to her overprotective manner. Coral never let Anemone socialize with her siblings, leave her side unaccompanied, or give her any sort of freedom whatsoever. This was such a damaging mindset to give a literal child, and I'm not surprised at how Anemone turned out after all the trauma. It only left her with total isolation, and the only dragons she interacted with were servants or diplomats. Moving on to the next point, being spoiled. Relating to the last few points, Anemone was practically the golden child, and because she was Coral's only heir to the throne at the time, she got all the royalty treatment to herself. Whereas if she would have grown up with Tsunami, the two of them would have shared the attention just a little bit, making Anemone have a less self-centered attitude. The effect this had on her is shown a lot in Arc 2. For example, Anemone treated others like they were her servants, mainly because she never had many interactions with the dragons, who didn't obey her every command. She became self-centered due to the all attention she had received as a princess, and began to flaunt her treasure around Jade Mountain Academy. The more she used her animus magic, the more Anemone became confident, in a negative way. She hoarded her treasure, even though the worth of it could have helped so many less fortunate dragons. Thankfully, she donated most of it by the time of the end of Arc 3 in order to help build possibility. Anemone often studies others' flaws and thought highly of herself. Though the animus magic is mostly to blame, her circumstances and parenting shouldn't be ignored. In my opinion, the animus magic only amplify the feelings that were hidden deep down. Anemone may not have even consciously realized that they are there to begin with. Another one of the key points that helps us understand Anemone's behavior is her animus magic. Like I said earlier, the more she used it, the more confident and judgmental she was of other dragons. I feel as though animus magic affects dragons differently based on their personality. For example, Arctic had always had the majority of those darker thoughts in his mind before he started using his powers. So the more Arctic began enchanting things, the darker he became. But with Anemone, she suppressed those thoughts as much as she could. When she started using her powers more and more, the easier it was for her to turn back in the end. I think her personality plays a huge factor into how corrupted animus magic makes you. Some dragons, like Arctic, spiral down into a hole they can never get out of. But with dragons like Anemone, her original personality helped balance out some of the more bad deeds. 
It amplifies and twists around a dragon's worst traits. Anemone had a lack of confidence, was shy, and very submissive. Once her magic began to corrupt her, she became confident, greedy, and defiant. Arctic was cold, angry, and spiteful. The more he uses magic, the more those traits began to amplify themselves. So therefore, I believe that positive traits get twisted around and become the opposite, with extreme animus use, and negative traits become amplified. But thankfully, Anemone has been changing for the better. She has slowly started to become the way she was before, mostly because of the necklace she enchanted in order to keep her soul from turning evil. With Darkstalker no longer being her mentor, Coral finally agreeing to distance herself, and being away with friends and having more freedom, Anemone has changed significantly. I'm very proud of how far she has come in the story, and I really hope she does get past all of this. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. What did you guys think? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.